our graphical user interface for Python this year is going to be a web page or a series of web pages. And we're going to use the Python library Flask, which is used for setting up nice little um, web applications. And we're going to do that in Visual Studio because it run, rolls up a little server for us, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, get into Visual Studio, you'll probably have to sign in and stuff, and then go File, New Project. And you need to find, um, under Python, in this tree over here, not Flask Web Project, but if you go into Web, Blank Flask Web Project. If you uh, use the other one, if you don't use this one, it does an awful lot of auto-generated code for you, which will be irritating for you because it means that your uh, project will be bloated with code that you don't understand why it's there, what it does. And it will be irritating for me because when I come to mark your pro projects, I can't give you any credit for code that you didn't write. So we're going to go with blank flask web project, which will be just enough to get us started. When you um, get, you, we need to set this stuff up down here. Um, location is really important. In my experience, if you use a, like a UNC path, like this one is here, this slash slash internal dot .nz, if that is part of your location, um, you often have, you are quite likely to have problems. Don't know for sure if that will happen in a Flask project, but it's been my experience in other environments. So the best thing to do is to browse and go to this PC and choose a path that doesn't have the UNC internal.packerangle.score to end And I'm pretty sure you've got one. I just can't remember what it is right now. Uh, I'm going to get around everything by putting it onto my D drive where I'm going to make a new folder called Flask uh, Demo. And because I just made one a moment ago, I'm going to call it Flask Demo 2 because why not? Uh, no spaces, you note, we're on the web here, we don't want any spaces. And same in terms of the file name, no spaces. Just let's get in that habit, eh? So, okay, and that's a blank flask web project, which will take a moment to generate. Um, you will want to install into your Python local environment, the middle one here and that should have all the libraries that you need. You may get another message about um, permissions. I think the middle option is the right one, the one that is just don't, you don't need to raise um, your level. So this is all that it's auto-generated for you. It is worth just having a quick look here. So we're importing a uh, the Flask library or part of the Flask library. And um, there's a couple of bits that set this up. So app equals flask name creates the application. So typically for an event driven program like this, we make an app, which is kind of running in a main loop in the background, listening for events. So this app equals flask name is setting that up. And um, of course, the this runs, but this def doesn't run. But this bit does run. If name equals main, it's just double checking that this is the main file for this um, project. We don't need to worry too much about that. It's always the same. It's just a sort of implementation detail. And the bit that actually runs the application is app.run. And that kind of gets it up and running with that uh, event listening loop. This stuff is setting up a little web servers rolling up a little local web server on the computer here because of course if we're making a web application we do need a web server to run our code and rather than having a web server on a separate server somewhere else uh, visual studio just rolls up a little thing for us to a little server for us to use so that's um, sort of boilerplate stuff that's happening in the background and the interesting thing is here just notice this return hello world i'm just going to hit the play button Hopefully it's going to fire up um, this for you. And it's, ho it's fired up the local host. That's where we're accessing this local host. It might say 127.0.0.1 and then this port number. And then we can see the hello world that we had a moment ago. So if I um, 
just roll back to here and hit the stop button. That web server is no longer running. So um, we're a long way along our path towards having a working web app. But it didn't make a web page. It just kind of spat out something that looked a bit like a web page. Most of the stuff in Flask happens in templates. So I'm going to find that folder where we were just doing some stuff. And it's Flask Demo 2. And uh, it's not the solution is kind of a Visual Studio thing. The actual app itself, this is what we were working on. And we need a folder of templates. It's always called templates. It's never called anything else. Flask needs a folder called templates. In that folder, I'm going to put an index.html. So text document and rename as index.html. So what we're going to do is we're going to get it to um, render this file. And in good time, we'll make it so that it actually does some logic in here. Uh, we don't need it to do that right now. So we're just going to say hello from Flask. Something like that. That'll do. And save that. And then back in our application, this is the interesting thing. App dot, this is what we need to know about. App dot root slash. This is uh, looking at what pathway the user has typed in. So an alternative to this, I'll just um, show you what it might look like. If we had, say, app.root slash uh, contact, then what it will run is whatever is after this. So we might have a def contact and um, that's what runs here. Uh, we're not going to bother with that right now. This slash just means the uh, sort of the root URL. So in our case, localhost, but if it was on a, a server, whatever that was, packeranger.school, nz, or whatever. And rather than return hello world, we want it to render that template that we just made. So I'm going to say render template and it's going to be slash index.html. Um, one last thing is this render template is actually a bit of functionality from the Flask library that isn't yet imported. So we need to say up here, import that as well. So import render template, save that, run it. And what we should see this time, it says hello from Flask. So it's actually fired up that little index.html file. Um, and this here has told, when we typed in the slash, it went to this function. We can put other stuff in this function. We will in good time. We're not doing it yet. We just said go and render that template. And we didn't even pass any data to it. It didn't do anything logical. But we have a working environment and a working Flask app.